Bronsted Lowry acid base model. That's what we're going to learn about today. You may wonder why this picture of the Art Institute of Chicago in front of you. One reason I do is because the statue here has been exposed to a great deal of acid rain. And over, over years and years, parts of the statue have deteriorated. So we see acid rain is an important uh, concept when we talk about acids and bases. Let's begin our discussion. First of all, what is a Bronsted Lowry acid and a base? Well, first of all, the main thing is going to define an acid. It's different from Arrhenius acid. An acid from the Bronsted Lowry model is a proton donor. Remember, proton is a hydrogen with a positive charge. So that's our proton anytime I say the word. Next, what is a base? Whatever accepts a proton or takes it is a base. So a base is a proton acceptor. So these are when you write a re, write a reaction, you're going to normally see that these two things are going to be the reactants. So these will be reactants when you're identifying acids and bases. Next, what is a conjugate acid? Conjugate acid is a particle that accepted the, that accepted the proton. So the particle that gains the proton is going to be the conjugate acid. And next, what is a conjugate base? The uh, the particle that lost the proton is going to be the conjugate base, or what's left behind. These two things you'll see will be products in the reactions we're looking at. So in the reaction we'll look at conjugate acids and conjugate bases will be products. So as we write reactions, we'll just write A for acids, B for base, CA for conjugate acid, and CB for conjugate base. Let's do some examples. So first we have this example of water and hydrochloric acid reacting to form hydronium ion and chloride ion. So what is the acid? So if you see here, HCl the H is actually lost. So this H is transferred, it goes from HCl over to water. So for that reason we would say HCl is the acid. So that's our acid. We see water accepted the proton, so here water is acting as a base, so water is a base. Remember we said conjugate acids and conjugate bases are on the other side of the reaction. We see the hydronium is, is a, contains a water particle that accepted the proton, so this would be the conjugate acid. So here we have the conjugate acid. And on next to that we have chloride, and that's the particle that was left behind when the proton left, so that would be the conjugate base. That's it. Now right, let's do a couple more. Next one, we have ammonia reacting with hydrogen chloride to form ammonium and chloride ion. So what is the acid in this reaction? We see once again there's an H that's left, and the H goes from HCl over to the ammonia. So whatever donates the acid or the proton is our acid. So that HCl is once again our acid. The NH3, the ammonia, is what accepted it, so that would be our base. Remember, acids and bases are reactants. When we go to the other side of, of the reaction, the, on the product side, we see the NH4, the ammonium, is the ammonia that with a proton, so that's what's accepted the proton, so we say this is the conjugate acid. And what's left behind with the proton left would be the chloride ion, so that would be the conjugate base. So you should be able to identify and look at reactions and label acid base, conjugate acid, conjugate base. Now something else that's important as we look through these is what is what we call a conjugate acid base pair. So what is a conjugate acid base pair? It's two substances related to each other by the donating and accepting of just a single proton. So if you see here, HCl is the acid in this reaction because it donated a proton, then water is the base in this reaction because it accepted. On the other side, we see that hydronium is be the conjugate acid because that is a particle that accepted the proton and chloride was left behind, so that's a conjugate base. But there's two pairs for this. So HCl and chloride ion would be a conjugate acid base pair because the only thing different between those two is a proton being taken away. Similarly, water and hydronium ion are also a conjugate acid base pair because the only difference between those is, it is also a proton. Notice the charge changes. When we take away a positive from a neutral particle, we get a negative charge. When we add a positive to a neutral particle, we got a positive charge. So you should also see a charge difference when you look at a conjugate acid base pair. Let's do a couple of these. So let's see if you can identify the conjugate acid base pair here. So we have a hydrogen chloride reacting with water to form hydronium and chloride ion. So we'd say this would be the acid. And the base pair that would go with this would be the chloride ion, because the only difference between those is losing the proton. And 
So that would be the base that would go with that, con with that asset, or we call this the conjugate base since it's on this side. Now we know this is a conjugate acid, but the base that goes with this conjugate acid would be right here, that would be water, so this would be the base because it accepts a proton from HCl. It's that simple. Let's do a couple more. So in this one, water is acting as a base. We see water in some reactions acts as an acid, and if it accepts, it's acting as a base. So for this question, we actually want to uh, determine which of the pairs are acid-base pairs. The only difference between those should be a proton. So the first one, we have water and hydronium. So we see if we just add a, add a proton to water, we would get H3O when it has a positive charge. So this indeed is an acid-base pair. Let's look at the next set. Would this be an acid-base pair? The answer is no, this is not an acid-base pair, because if you add a water to a hydroxide, or a proton to, I'm sorry, to hydroxide, you would get H2O. So the acid that goes with hydroxide would be water, and for nitric acid, HNO3, the conjugate base for that should just simply be a nitrate, NO3, with a negative charge. So that should be the conjugate base for that. So this one is not an acid-base pair. I actually provided those, but that's not an acid-base pair. What about C? Would that be an acid-base pair? We see they both contain sulfate. We have sulfuric acid and sulfate ion. This would not be an acid-base pair because it lost two protons. The difference between an acid-base pair is you can only lose one proton. So this, once again, is not an acid-base pair. And what about the last one? Is this an acid-base pair? This is an acid-base pair because the only difference between acetate and acetic acid is you've added a proton when going from acetate to acetic acid, so that is indeed an acid-base pair. Another question. So identify the acid-base, conjugate acid, conjugate base in the following reactions. Let's do that. We've, we've got acetic acid reacting with water, and so here's the reaction of acetic acid and water. So what happens, we see the acid would be what donated the proton. So in this, you see the acetic acid has an H on one side, but it doesn't on the other. So we would call the acetic acid, the HC2H3O2, as the acid. Now the base would be what ex ever accepted that proton, and we see this H went from here over to the water. So that's where it went, and so the water serves as the base. Next, what is a particle that, that accepted? That would be hydronium, so we'd say this is the conjugate acid and the particle that was left behind after the proton left acetic acid would be acetate ion, so this would be your conjugate base. The other thing we could do is list the acid-base pairs on here, and that would be rather simple, would be hydronium ion and water, with hydronium ion being the acid and water being the base that goes with that. And the other acid-base pair would be acetic acid and acetate, with that acetate being what was left behind after you lost your, lost your proton. Let's do another question, one more. In this question, identify the same thing, acid base, conjugate acid, conjugate base. But this one, we've got sodium, acid, uh, sodium acetate reacting with water. Now what happens when you put sodium acetate in water? It dissolves, and the acetate part of that reacts with water. So here's what the reaction looks like. You have acetate ion plus a water forming acetic acid and hydroxide. So in this one, what would be the acid base, conjugate acid, conjugate base? So you see in this one, acetate actually doesn't have an H to lose, but it actually gains one. And then water actually is the one that loses an H. So in this, we'd say water in this reaction is the acid, because it's going to donate a proton from water, and it's going to go over here to the acetate ion. So the acetate ion actually is going to be the base in this reaction, so I'm going to put B there for base. On the other side of the reaction, we have acetic acid. So this would be what we call the conjugate acid, because it's a particle that gained the proton on the product side. And the particle that was left behind after the proton was left from the water would be the hydroxide, so this would be our conjugate base. So in this reaction, water is acting as a base in this reaction. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love chemistry.